Hello Internet, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm dealing with the BIS Bulletin number 58 of 16th June this year. Uh, that is about minor as intermediaries, extractable value and market manipulation in crypto and DeFi. Uh, I was wondering, having read this uh, memo, uh, if business models in the DeFi world that rely on minor extractable value have a future. And I've discussed this question with a friend of mine, Hartmut Renz. He worked at uh, several banks and uh, practiced as a lawyer in a, an international law firm. But um, I'll give him the time to introduce himself and then we touch the issues on um, minor, uh, minor fees for their infrastructure services, uh, building the blocks and their incentives in the minor extractable value. And then we ask the question, is this possible front running and is it unregulated, is it permissible or what are criminal implications or civil implications. In the end, we briefly touched the latest developments in European regulatory issues such as the MiCA regulation. I'm Andreas Strapp, lawyer in Passau, and I'm advising on compliance risk management. But now, without much ado, I'll hand over to Hartmut. I'm very proud to, uh, to have you on this call. Um, how do I introduce you uh, best? I think you have more follower on LinkedIn or uh, on um, Xing than, than I have. So it's basically better for everybody to, to look at your profile and, and know what you're doing. Um, today, um, I, I'd like to talk to you uh, about the BIS, Bank of International Settlement Bulletin number 58 on uh, minors as intermediaries. Uh, that is a um, quite new thing. It's not brand new. It's from June 16th uh, this year. And the Bank of International Settlement discusses um, minor extractable value. And that is an interesting concept, which, well, I was not quite familiar with. with. I didn't know that this thing is, uh, is, is possible at all. And, and, and then I was, I was wondering... If business models relying on, on, on these things, uh, so uh, relying on minor extractable value, if they are valid or will remain valid um, uh, in, in the future. I find it very interesting, to be honest, and just um, one or two more sentences um, on my background. Um, yes, I'm... Um, more than 20 years um, with experience in the regulatory market uh, in Germany as well as in, in Europe and uh, with some connections to the US and work for public banks as well as cooperative banks, uh, a huge US um, investment bank as well as asset managers and the US law firm. So uh, I'm always curious and um, I'm always curious about uh, what's new, what's coming up and uh, how could I share my experience with uh, first my current employer or second with others in the markets uh, to share this information and to, let's say, challenge what is written down in terms of a potential new approach. And um, this is a very interesting bulletin to me. And it's definitely, um, but I don't want to um, get the last point first, uh, not a new topic, to be honest. And uh, I see a lot of things uh, which I had touch points in my past. So if you go into much more detail in this bulletin, I'm pretty sure all of us and uh, the audience as well would recognize that it's not new. It's very well known. I think it's one thing that we should, without going into too much detail, it's important to, to, to say what, what are we talking about? What is minor extractable value and, and, and what's interesting in this concept? Um, first thing is, um, this is nothing that has to do with Bitcoin. So uh, that must be made very clear. It, it, it comes from Ethereum and, and it is um, a basic part of the decentralized finance concept. Um, so, uh, and, and, and one important thing is, so miners, miners are providing the blocks 
and, and uh, in which the transactions are stored. So they, they grab from a public uh, memory pool or mempool the transactions, and then they put it into blocks in, in the blockchain. And uh, this is a decentralized um, situation. So it is not uh, as in traditional finance where we have banks or uh, settlement systems or, uh, or exchanges that do price discovery and then settle the deal and, and document it. We have here a decentralized structure and the, um, and, and the miners are the bottom layer of um, this, um, this infrastructure. And they are decentralized, so so they have to get something back from the system, from the decentralized finance system, for them to provide this infrastructure um, service. And what they usually get is they get a transaction fee, and the transaction fee um, comprises of two elements. One thing is a flat fee, which is not very high, and then there are tips, or let's say... Um, they, those people who want the transaction to be booked on a certain block, they they offer um, in some kind of an auction, they offer um, an additional fee that, that can be quite high. And, and all together, this is the, the miner's fee, the, the remuneration the miner gets for assembling the block. And um, and 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 uh, the the idea now it, behind this all is that the miner says, okay, if there are more blocks or, or more transactions uh, that um, want to be in a block, then then I want I have then I prioritize those transactions according to the fee that I will earn. So this is the ordering principle. Um, and, and, and this is how miners um, earn their money. And at that point, I'd, I'd like to ask you the, the first question, um, because, well, as I know, so booking of transactions or so in, in traditional final finance usually should be um, in, in the order they are received. And, 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 and so here we have a situation where we say, OK, if you think your transaction is very important, then you can get... Uh, precedence over uh, other transactions, smaller retail transactions um, that, that are not so important or will not offer such a high tip or, or, or priority fee. Let me first start with a, a first comment, Andreas, and um, that is, um, that's a very honest one. Um, I personally don't care about um, what kind of let's say, asset classes or financial instruments or instruments we are talking about. Um, I was a lawyer a few years ago. I was a compliance officer. But um, the personal approach from my end is not only to look if something is allowed or not allowed to do, my personal approach is if it's um, according to ethical standards and legitimate to follow an approach. And what we have right here is a kind of asset class, which we have mentioned, in the Ethereum environment. And we have validators. Validators to, let's say, validate the new created, and I call it instruments or assets or whatever. A more common wording on that, and not a specific one if it's a financial instrument or not. This creation is let's say finalized by a person. And this person is the validator. In this validator decides when and under which circumstances this new kind of instruments will be part, let's call it the market. And when this, or as soon as this instrument is then part of the market, he is aware when this instrument was, let's say, added to the market and under which circumstances. So this is the, the pre-information um, to evaluate what we're talking about right now. And now it comes to the point, and, and this is the very interesting part of um, the bulletin of the um, BIAS, because BIAS, you know it, and the audience is aware of that. BIAS sitting in Switzerland in Basel is, let's say, the... Um, I don't want to call it the head of us, but the, the combination of uh, national banks, which are regulatory bodies, to evaluate what the next steps of 
regulation would be, let's say, in the European market. So they are currently taking care of this kind of situation and thinking about what kind of allowance do we need maybe for this approach or is it all regulated or do we need new regulation on that? Yes, uh, th thank you, thank you for 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 this insight, and and I I think this is um, this is the major point you, you made. Um, there are people who are doing this, so the miners are not the computers. There are people behind it, and they are doing things. And 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 I fully agree with you uh, when when you say um, they have to adhere to ethical standards. And I would add. To criminal law and civil law. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm 30 years in, 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 in banking business and, and um, I have seen, seen some things and you said, you said you've seen uh, other things and we will come to that later, but that's may, maybe there is not only regulation and Mika and, and, and those things, but it's criminal things and, uh, and, and there are uh, liability uh, questions, um, civil liability questions that could arise as well, as soon as you know who is behind these transactions. Okay, but, but uh, let's let's come back to the uh, minor extractable value uh, issue. Yeah, but that's, and, let's, let's just stick one more moment to this very interesting point that I asked. I, I really like your view on that because um, what I see in the market, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that uh, you see the same approach uh, based on your mandates as well, is that if we're talking about regulation, everybody, everybody thinks new regulation means new regulation coming from a regulatory body or from somebody who is setting up new law. Which means if we come to this from a German legal point of view, for example, only German legal point of view, we're talking about public law and only public law. What we all forget is that we still have criminal law, which you have already mentioned. Maybe we're talking about fraud. Maybe we're talking about other things. And of course, civil law in terms of contracts is allowed to act like we described it right now. So this is a very interesting point. And if uh, the audience would go into much more detail um, into this bulletin, or will talk to you as a lawyer, I'm pretty sure they will also recognize that we are not only talking about public law, just to add to your approach. Right. Uh, thank, thank you for that. Uh, I, I really appreciate that we share the same view. Uh, but, but, but let's come back to the, the minor extractable value, which, which, is, which adds something, uh, another layer to, to, to these things we have discussed now. And, 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 and there we, when I read that this is possible, I really was surprised. Because if, if we then go one step higher from the settlement layer where we have the miners, then we have the trading layer where we have, for example, uh, bots or uh, decentralized protocols, and, and they all build on the, infra the settlement infrastructure and build up then those smart contracts infrastructure where you can have decentralized exchanges, so-called DEXs, or you can have those smart contracts that um, automatically um, um, do do things on on the blockchain. Um, so and 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 I was really surprised to see that um, it seems to be in the community legitimate in some way that the miner also acts um, as a trader, that is also a market participant, and then and 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 you said. Hartmut, you said, okay, the miner sees the transactions that are there, and 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 then and and he has the potential to order them, to put them into a certain order, and that allows him, um, and that's the key point of the BIS bulletin, bulletin here, that allows him to uh, insert his own transaction before a transaction that he puts in the block, and maybe even after that. And, and the BIS bulletin here uh, talks about front running or sandwich trade, trades. And I was really surprised that this is uh, possible. Um, you hit exactly again um, the right point, Andreas. Um, I read this paper as well. And it was for me, to be honest, not new. Because if you're thinking about um, this case which we have described, not from a legal perspective, not from pure legal perspective, um, and you will 
um, look for the right structure of this, let's say, approach or trade or whatever, or validation. Then you will see exactly what is already regulated in some other parts of the German, of the European, of the US, or somewhere else on the globe as well in terms of financial instruments. So if somebody, and now we're coming to the point which you have already mentioned, a kind of maybe insider trade or inside information that you as a validator is using an information, and I won't call it inside information. Maybe it's not an inside information, but it's an information. And based on this information, you decide when, why, and how this kind of evaluated new ether or something else is coming to the market. And then in combination of that, based on this information, you decide for your own trades or for other trades, why, when, and how they will come to the market, then you are using this information. And now we all need to clarify, including our regulatory bodies, if they want to do this or want to have this in the market, or maybe, and then we need to have a closer look into the new Mika um, regulation because they are also taking care of insider trading, inside information, as well as market manipulation, if this should be allowed or not. This is, let's say, a legal question if it comes to legal terms and if it comes to regulatory approach. From a pure ethical perspective, if I as a person want to have an approach like this, it's pretty the same for me based on my past 20 years in the market, what is already described in the market at this regulation when we talk about financial instruments. You're using an information and you are approach is to use this information, for example, to influence the market or gain money more than you could do without the information and other examples, which you could see, for example, in the MAR as well. Indeed, indeed. And, 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 and if, if, if you say, okay, is it a, is it a really a market abuse? Um, you said your question was, was, I was wondering the same thing because, okay, the, the mempool is visible, so everybody sees which transactions are waiting for to be included into a block. But but I agree with you on that point that I say, okay, but but the miner decides which ones go into the block and 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 in which direction they are ordered, and they can put their own transactions between others, and that makes it possible for for them. To, to earn risk-free uh, money, and that is that is what everybody is looking for. That is what we heard in the banking sector and 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 the, um, the securities trading sector. Always, this is arbitrage. It's called arbitrage, and yes, it is. From my point of view, it's perfectly legitimate that if you buy um, a share in in Frankfurt. Uh, and uh, that that is cheaper there, and 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 then sell um, another another one in New York, uh, uh, and and so you you make the prices from Frankfurt uh, transfer to New York or or other ways round. This is this is legitim legitimate. So and that is what we all discussed when the market abuse regulation came up. Which which liquidity providing functions are legitimate? Because of course, if you have uh, you, you need to have legit liquidity providers in the market and they need to get money out of it. So it's not the question, do we need certain infrastructure in, in, in a decentralized market that, that makes it work? But the question is, um, the question is, do we allow certain practices and, and 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 I really doubt that front running and sandwich trades are among them. Yes, you're right, and and that's my my personal question as well. Because if you're talking about constellations like these, we should also raise, I think, three questions. The first is, are we talking about a market which could be influenced by what we are doing right now? Second is. Are we talking about an instrument, an asset class, which is already regulated by a kind of public law? Because we're not talking about civil law or criminal law, because if we're talking about criminal law, we're pretty close to a fraud, for example. And third is, do we want a regulation 
on that. And what does it mean we? I'm not a regulator, you are not a regulator. But the regulators, as well as the ones who are setting up new laws, should decide if this should be allowed or not. I'm also with you that each single trade, each single approach to a market is influencing a market because that's part of the market, let's say, approach or the market function. But some parts of a behavior, of a conduct, and I don't want to call it a conduct topic or conduct risk, but in terms of the behavior on a market, the regulatory framework should decide if this should be allowed or not. And to be very honest, to be very honest, we had similar cases, which are already laid down in this BIS bulletin decades ago. And that was exactly the point of time when the regulator said, hey, this is a financial instrument, we need to regulate this. So I'm, I'm pretty curious how the regulators will act and react based on this BIS paper. To sum it up, um, even, even you do not really know what will come out of this. Nobody I knows. Think nobody. Nobody knows. Um, but what I'm, what I'm pretty sure is uh, that this uh, decentralized finance is something that, that has a future. Yeah. And but, um, I think it will have, uh, and, and, and it, it's grow, it grows up. It grows up. And, and, and to get more people into the market and to get, for example, retail customers into the market, to make it safe, uh, not only for nerds to buy Bitcoin or uh, other financial products there or uh, crypto assets, then we need uh, uh, trust. And trust uh, can't be uh, that, well, you can read the white paper and, and, and then decide if you buy it or not. This is something for nerds, and that doesn't work uh, with financial instruments. They have to be explained and, and, and sold uh, to the public in a uh, responsible acting manner. And, and I think uh, if, if, if DeFi wants to succeed and wants to enter the mass markets and, and wants to grow, then they have to, um, well, they have to have a regulation that allows it, the normal person on the street to, to engage in such transactions. Yeah, but although we both don't know how this will go on, but we both know that we already see a trend. Yes. And the trend is that um, based on what we had in the past, uh, Mika was developed and Mika is now, let's say, in force and will be in force in the member states of the European market um, in due course, let's say it like this. And Mika is um, looking on... Um, insider trading as well as market manipulation from a point of view which needs to have a definition of a financial instrument, at least by now, because NFTs are not part of, of the Mika regulation by now, but maybe in the future or maybe on a new definition or what else. And second, this is the very, from my point of view, Andreas, uh, the very interesting discussion point right now is that looking into the US market, which is a huge, huge market, at least and not only at least, but at least for cryptocurrencies as well. And Mika is the market in crypto assets regulation. So that's, um, that's the point what we're talking about. If you're looking into the US market, I don't see any discussion about, do we really need to regulate things like that? The only discussion I see is, if we want to, we from a US perspective, want to have a regulation either it's a financial instrument, then SEC would come into um, this kind of discussion. And this is what they're currently doing. Or do we speak about commodities? Then the CFTC is coming into this discussion as well. And they are both in a huge discussion on if some of the instruments are more a financial instrument or some of them are more a commodity. It's a very interesting discussion. So the audience would, would recognize that as well in the, in the market or at least on, on LinkedIn or somewhere else. But when we have a discussion and we have a result in the US market and a decision would be made, I'm pretty sure that other markets like the EU or the German market would follow this kind of approach. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty recommendable to look on these discussions in the US market. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Hartmut, um, for, from, from, uh, for this view from the US perspective. Um, 
I don't know if 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 uh, if we should stop at that point and say, okay, we've just, we've talked about um, minor extractable value and the biz bulletin. There are so many things we could discuss, and I'd really like to to continue these discussions if if you find um, another twenty minutes or so. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed this, or uh, that the audience enjoyed it. Well, that's the better point. So, no, I, I, I let, let let me ask your final question. Um, did we miss something that we we should really include in this video call, or is uh, on? Uh, is, yes, did we miss something? To be to be honest, uh, yes, of course, because it's such a huge discussion, and we also had uh, discussions. Let's say it on a surface of this huge ocean, which we both are aware of. But uh, this is a starting point. It could be a starting point. And if my personal view on that is needed, uh, let me know. I'm happy to uh, to join um, more, um, let's say, discussions uh, like that as well, Andreas. But if it comes to a conclusion, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is a very interesting discussion right now, which we are seeing based on what we see in the US market, based on what we have with Mika, based on what we see in the BIS bulletin. And this is the future, and the future starts now. Thank you, Hartmut. My pleasure, Andreas. See you soon. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked this new format. If you did, give this video a like, uh, uh, subscribe to my channel or recommend it to your friends. I'd like uh, to do many future videos in this format and I hope I see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>